In It Together is brought to you by the Ministry of Education and UNICEF. Good morning. Today is the umpteenth day since our classrooms have been closed. That means we haven't been able to share snacks at school. We haven't been able to play sports and really the hardest part has probably been being apart from each other. Yeah, doing my work from home is not really tough. Listening to radio programs and keeping up with teachers through WhatsApp is all right, but I also miss my friends. Well, we have great news to announce. With this special TV program dedicated to us kids, we can be in it together. Our friends can all tune in at the same time, learn about the zoo, drawing, and other cool things, and we can share our progress with each other. Social distancing may have us apart, but virtual learning is bringing us together. Let's jump on into what is ahead for us today. In it together! We kick off this morning with Animal of the Day. In Belize, we can boast that we have the best little zoo in the world. And so, let's visit our Belize Zoo virtually to learn about our unique Animal of the Day. There is no need to debate. Belize has the best little zoo in the world. With over 200 animals, and they're all kept in their natural habitat. Since forever, taking a trip to this zoo meant physically coming here. But I'm here to make your job easier. I'm Daniil, and I'll be bringing an animal a day to your living room. We will learn what they eat, how big or small they grow, and all the little features that makes them special. I am a dog lover, but being a mommy to a dog does not count. So joining me will be actual zookeepers who take care of these animals daily. Now, grab your notepad and be sure to allow your little brother and sister to join you, as we will be having lots of fun and adventures right here at the Belize Zoo. Zoo friends, welcome back to our favorite place, the Belize Zoo. As usual, we're hailing the trails with our adventures, and I'm so excited. Water bottle check, so let's go. As usual, I would need you to help me guess what animal we're doing today. For today, I'll give you guys a riddle, and if you guess the riddle, then you'll know what animal we're doing today. The riddle goes something like this. In the first book of the Bible, this creature tempted Adam and Eve to eat a fruit they shouldn't have. They ate the fruit and so they had to leave. What animal am I talking about? If you guessed the snake, you are so right. Back with us is Miss Wade, the zoo's education officer, who is right here to give us all the information we need. Hi, Miss Wade, how are you doing today? Hi, I'm doing good. Great, so Miss Wade, today we'll be teaching all our friends about the snake, a specific snake, because Belize has a lot of different species of snakes. So can you tell us all we need to know about the snake that we will be learning today? Sure. Hi guys, today we'll be learning about boa constrictor. Um, the common name is Hwaula, so Belize will know that snake by that name, right? The boa constrictor, they normally lives in broad um, leaf forests, rainforests, savannas, right? Um, they are specifically carnivores, so they eat small animals, which include insects and small birds. Okay, so how big do these snakes grow? Because in Belize, when people say a wola, it's a big snake. Sure. The Wola is really a big mix snake. It's one of the largest snakes that we have here in the country of Belize. The male can grow up to 12 feet, so you can imagine that size. And the female can um, grow up to 9 to 10 feet. Wow. And how do these snakes reproduce? The boa constrictor, they burn um, small snakes, which is snakeling, can be up to 50 snakelings. So it's wow. quite an amount. So Miss Wade, you're telling me that these snakes have 50 babies, not eggs. That's right. With this specific species, um, the boa constrictor, they don't lay eggs. They give birth, just like mammals give birth to youngs, they give 
birth to small snakes, which are known as snakelings, and they can give birth up to 50 of these little ones. Wow. So can you give us a description? If you are in your yard and you see a snake, how do you know that it is a boa constrictor or, or a wola? How do they look? Okay, with the boa constrictor, they are normally um, brown in color to a brown to grayish in color, right? And they are, like I mentioned before, they are really big in size. So if you see a gray or brown large snake, you should probably know that it's a boa constrictor. And you should also know that these snakes aren't venomous. Can you explain to us what that means? Sure, these snakes are non-venomous, meaning that they do not have venom, so they do not kill their prey by venom, but instead they squeeze them. That is the reason why they are referred to as boa constrictor. So Miss Wade, can you tell us one fun fact about these snakes? Did you know that boa constrictors swallow their food whole and head first? Hey guys, look who I have with me today. It's zookeeper Emmanuel Peck. You might have remembered him because he's also the zookeeper who is responsible for the tapirs. But today, he has a new pet. With him is Balboa, the boa constrictor. How are you today, Mr. Peck? I'm fine. I'm happy too. You're happy? That's great. So, who is he? Who is Balboa? Can you tell us a bit about him? All right, so the snake here's name is Balboa. It's about five feet in length. And like many people might know, the, these are one of the largest species of snakes we have. And um, how did Balboa end up at the Belize Zoo? So Balboa was found around the zoo here. So we need a representative because represent we... Represent a snake. Yes, yeah, a snake which can be taken to school to educate kids. Um, so Balboa is a mascot? He is. Great. So Balboa goes into schools and he meets kids. He meets so kids. So he doesn't bite? No. Great. And Hi, you, Balboa. And even kids that come to visit the zoo get a chance to see him here as well. Great. So I'll get a chance to hold Balboa today. There you go. Tail first. So snakes might be really intimidating. If you see them around, it's most likely they're not venomous. So be sure to just remove them. And if you have a snake that's in your community, be sure to call the zoo. Maybe they have a place here for them. And know that Balboa here is a great ambassador for snakes. And you can find him right here at the Bully Zoo. So it is very important to know that out of the 56 plus species of snakes living in Belize, only eight are actually venomous. These include the Central American coral snake, the Maya coral snake, the eyelash viper, the Tommy Gulf, which is actually very famous, the hognose viper, the jumping viper, the Mexican moccasin, and the neotropical rattlesnake. I would like to teach you a little rhyme that will help you to know the difference between a deadly coral snake and a friendly coral snake. It goes a little like this. Red on black, okay Jack. Red on yellow, deadly fellow. And if you are bitten by a snake, be sure to look at its patterns, its colors, and be sure to visit a doctor. Did you know that in the 90s, police had its own famous snake? His name was Julius Squeezer and he was owned by a friend of mine, Mr. Joe. We'll learn all about him now. So I know exactly who you are, but can you let our viewers know what's your name and a little bit about yourself? My name is Joe Garrell, and I've always been into nature. I've done a lot of different things in my life, but I always find a connection with nature. Um, I like animals, like being around them, interacting with them. And for that reason, for years, I've been doing different things that, you know, put me in touch with nature. So we heard you love snakes. How did that fascination begin? Ever since I was a child, very young, my grandfather, on my mom's side, used to take us to the zoo. We used to watch documentaries. Uh, national, we used to see National Geographic books and that kind of stuff. It wasn't on TV yet. 
And I was always fascinated with snakes, how they ate, how they you know, moved around without arms and that kind of stuff. How they, you know, I found them very fascinating from a very young age. So, I mean, I was always intrigued by the, um, everything they did. Great. So we heard you have, well, you had a very large and very famous snake. Can you tell us what his name was and a little about him? All right, I, years ago, many, many years ago, um, I had a, this is talking like early 80s, uh, a friend of ours sent us from California because they were bred in California, a uh, Burmese python. That's uh, the third largest species in the world. Um, actually, it's the same one that they're having problems with in Florida at the moment. They have, um, people have released them and they're breeding in the wild and they're, they're, they're causing a problem. But we had one, um, he sent it down for us. Uh, it, we, call, we named him Julius Squeezer. And we got him when he was five years old and about five feet long. Uh, he lived for 25 years before he passed of natural causes. Um, so he died at 30 years old. Wow. And he grew up to a length of about 16, between 16 and 17 feet and about 160 pounds. Well, I've always had snakes as pets. I mean, ever since I was eight or nine, I guess, we started collecting garden snakes. And um, originally I lived in Jamaica and then I moved here in 76. 12 years old, and when you came here, we had to learn about snakes because in Jamaica there are no venomous snakes and hardly any snakes, period, because they introduced mongoose from the colonial days and that kind of wiped out a lot of the snakes. But coming to Belize now, we knew that there are many species, there are 60 something species of snakes here, and there are a handful of, um, of venomous ones. <laughs> so we couldn't, we didn't feel um, safe just going out and catching snakes, so we had to learn a bit about what was here first. And we started off with little garden snakes and boas, and eventually we got up to, you know, fur lances and coral snakes and all that kind of stuff as well. We'd make cages for them. Uh, sometimes when you had too many of them, and some of them you can't keep together because some of them are um, cannibalistic. They would eat other snakes, um, like the black tail um, or king snakes. They'd eat other snakes, so you can't keep that with other snakes. So, we, you know, we'd um, have them loose in a room that's locked up or something like that. Yeah, but you know, we've had times where we had as many as like two or three dozen snakes. Wow. But back to Julius Squeezer. Um, mm -hmm. We've seen pictures and he seemed to have been an attraction. Um, how was that like going around with this large snake? Um, did Belizeans know of the snakes? And was there anything specific that you did with him? We used to go to schools or to different groups. We used to go up to a batch sub even and um, take him along and give presentations and talk about snakes, snakes of Belize or just snakes in general. Yeah. Okay, so he was somewhat of an ambassador for their species. Definitely. definitely. Great. Any, any wildlife that you have, you need a permit to keep. And we, had a, we, um, we always had permits for um, any of the snakes, for the snakes that we have most of the time because early on, you know, when I, you know, back in the 80s and stuff, that wasn't an issue. Of course. Um, but more recently, we had, had permits to keep the snakes. Um, you get that from the forestry department. Julius Squeezer was uh, captive bred and okay. imported. So we had to get permits to bring him into the country and had a permit to keep him and all that kind of stuff. And, you know, I don't think that anybody should be keeping any, any snakes at all, you know, if they don't have the knowledge of how to keep it properly and safely. And you know, if they're going to be doing harm to anybody, you shouldn't be teasing people with them and that kind of stuff. You know, that's not a good idea. Okay, so finally, what will you say to children who is watching a show and have a huge fear for snakes? You know, the fear of snakes and spiders aren't natural, really. And frogs? Uh, well, frogs, uh, none of those are natural. It's, it's caused from an experience that somebody had where they saw somebody else being scared by one or, or told them to be, a, um, you know, to, to be careful. And you know, it's, it's how they're raised. Uh, that's what brings up the fear. My kids have, I wouldn't say no fear of snakes, but they, they have a, um, a respect for them because they know that some, that they, even the ones that are non-venomous can bite. And you know, so you're just careful with them. And you, you know, the, the snakes are only trying to defend themselves. You know, so you have a, a good, yeah, general respect for them. And, you know, the snakes get a bad name and they're, it's, it's, you know, they're a part of the ecosystem. They're, they're needed. You know, I mean, everything from, you know, the, the geckos you have around your house, the little, um, you know, the, the vine snakes and stuff will be eating, you know, that kind of stuff, to the boars and uh, rat, um, the blacktails and that kind of stuff. They, they'll be eating rats. 
And you know, even in India, where there's a huge rat problem, they have um, great respect for cobras. They catch them a certain time of the year and they release them because they help them in the rice fields to take care of the rats that are affecting the crops. You know, so. Great way of putting it. You made snakes seem really useful. <laughs> Thanks, Mr. Joe, for joining us, and it was good catching up, and I hope the viewers enjoyed all the nice pictures of Julia Squeezer. You're welcome. Anytime. Hey, guys. Thanks for joining me today, and I do look forward to seeing you on another episode of Animal of the Day. If you have a picture at the zoo or a picture with your favorite animal, and that animal can be a dog, be sure to comment it under today's episode. You can find us at In It Together Belize on Facebook, or you can even message us at inittogetherbz at gmail.com. Guys, the zoo is open every day from 8.30 a.m. through to 5 p.m. Be sure to ask your parents to bring you over for your experience, because it is even better in person. And remember, the more you read, the more you'll know. And the more you learn, the more places you'll go. Thanks for joining me. Bye, guys. See you next time. That was really fun, but we will take a little commercial break and then we will return with some artsy fun. I suggest that you quickly gather a paper to draw on and some crayons or markers if you want to be part of the fun. We will take a quick break now so you have time to get your materials. Welcome back to In It Together. Have you heard about Pen Caetano or Yasir Musa? They are Belizeans who are famous because of their awesome art over the years. They started art when they were our age. Maybe we can become legends too, especially with the help of Miss Jazz, who will now guide us through Let's Draw. Hi everyone, welcome back to Let's Draw, where I teach you guys to draw the coolest things. My name is Jazz, and of course, today I am here once again with... Mia. Yes, guys, and I know you guys loved Mia the last time, and I love having her here. And Mia actually brought us a special surprise. So Mia went home and brought her entire collection of markers for us to use today. Look at how many colors we have here, guys. We're gonna have some fun with this. All right, Mia, are you ready? Yeah. Woo! So much. All right, so you want to pick the color you're going to use? Mm-hmm. Can I use blue? All right, I'm going to use purple. All right, guys, so remember, what you'll be needing today is a marker, something to draw on, and then something to color with. So we're going to do something special today. So what I want you guys to do first is to go ahead and write from numbers one to eight, all spaced out on your paper, okay? So we're gonna come like this. We're gonna do one. We're gonna do the number two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. All right? So now what we're actually going to do is we're gonna transform each of these numbers into a little drawing. So we're gonna be having multiple drawings for today instead of just one, all right? You ready, me? All right, guys, let's get started. So first, we're gonna transform our one into a tree. And for that, we're gonna draw another one right beside it. Then we're gonna come here and we're gonna do tree arrows sticking up, just like that, okay? All right, guys, and so now we're gonna come around and we're just gonna do several loops, small circles right around for the top of our tree. And then we're gonna come here and then we're just gonna draw one straight line for the ground, okay? So for our two, we're gonna transform this into a street light. So we're gonna come here and do one straight line across and then we're gonna do a little circle for a bulb and then just draw a couple straight lines coming out from it. Then we're gonna come here and connect the bottom of our two and then draw a couple straight lines down. All right, and that is it. And so Mia, what do you think number three is going to be? What do you, can you guess? Uh, a it's butterfly. A, correct, so we're gonna turn number three into a butterfly. And for that, we're gonna come here and draw a circle for its head. And then we're gonna do an oval for its body. Then on the other side, we're gonna do another number three, but just in the opposite direction. So we're gonna come here 
and do another number three. Perfect. All right, guys, so now we're gonna draw its antennas, and for that, we're gonna come here with a curve, and then we're gonna go right under. Same thing on the other side, and then we're gonna put in its eyes, and we're gonna give it a little smile. Then for its body, we're just gonna come here and draw a couple curved lines right across its torso. Finally, for its wings, we're gonna give it four circles, just for decoration. Okay? Now for our four, we're gonna transform our number four into a boat. So we're gonna come here, draw a straight line and connect it. We're gonna come at the bottom, draw another straight line across, and then we're gonna do a semicircle to connect. Now we all know that boats are usually in water, so we're gonna come here and do a couple squiggly lines right underneath for our water. All right guys, so number five is going to be one of my favorite fruits. It's going to be, can you guess Mia? Apple. An apple, correct. So for that, we're gonna come here and draw a curve. Another curve, that's gonna be the top of our apple. This is a leaf. And then we're gonna draw a couple straight lines just like this. Now, we're gonna come, curve, and connect. And there you go. If you guys couldn't see it before, there is our apple, right? Number six is going to be another insect. It's going to be a snail. So for that, we're gonna come here, draw a big circle right around the six and connect it back. Then on the inside, we're gonna draw one line here and another here. Then for our snail's body, we're gonna start off with a curve and we're gonna make it come all the way around and then stop and then draw a smaller curve to connect it, okay? So we all know that snails have some weird eyes. I know you guys watch SpongeBob and you guys see Gary's eyes all the time. So for that, we're gonna come here and draw two antenna like, and then we're gonna put two circles on top of it. And then a dot right inside for its eyes. And we're just gonna give it a little smile. All right, now I'm not gonna tell you guys what number seven is gonna be. Me and I are just gonna go ahead and draw it and I hope that you guys can guess what we're doing before we're done. All right, Mia, so now we're gonna come here and we're gonna draw almost a circle, but we're not gonna close it and leave it like that. Then we're gonna go right around underneath our seven and do a curve. Correct. Now we're gonna draw a little oval shape right here. And before we continue, Mia, can you guess what number seven is? Can you guess? You can't? I wonder if you guys can guess at home. Okay, so now we're gonna come here and we're gonna draw one straight line. And then we're gonna do several other lines but in different directions, just like that. Mm hmm perfect. Next, we're gonna come and draw a curve. And then, we're gonna draw another curve right under it and connect it. And in here, we're gonna draw a C. Can you tell us what it is now, Mia? A mouse. It's a mouse, correct, guys. That is it, so we're gonna just do our little eye for a mouse, and that is it. Oh, I see it now. You see it now? <laughs> that one was hard to guess, true? All right, guys, so now for our number eight, our final number, we are going to do a snowman. And so we're gonna come here and give our snowman a little hat, just like that. Do a little triangle. We're gonna put a little ball on top. Then we're gonna do his eyes. We're just gonna do two dots for his eyes. We're gonna give him a little triangle for his nose. And then half a circle for his smile. Then we're just gonna give him some sticks, some straight lines for his arms and some more little straight lines for his fingers. Then we're just gonna come here for his legs. And then we're just gonna put three circles right here for his buttons. And there you go. So you guys actually made eight drawings today instead of one. That is a new record. I'm so proud of you guys and I hope you were able to keep up, okay? So now me and I are just gonna select some of our favorite colors and just color in our drawings, okay? You guys can use any, any colors that you want for your drawings. So be as creative as you'd like. You ready, me? All right, guys.
All right, guys, I hope that you enjoyed this one today and you had fun with Maya and I because I know that we both had fun. So remember to ask mom or dad to take a picture of your drawing and send it to us so that we can see that in it together, busy at gmail.com. All right, guys, so that is it for today's episode. Bye. Bye. And just like that, we're one drawing closer to being art legends. If you're like me, this is a big leap forward from stickman drawings. So I'll be showing off my art. We will show off yours too if your parents take a picture and email it to us at the address on the screen. Now is a good time to put away our supplies and get ready for our next ultra fun segment. Kindly stay tuned while we take a short break. If you are like any one of us, you've probably OD'd on junk food during our time away from school. Learning from home has also meant relaxing for long hours on the couch, binging on Fortnite or TikTok or cartoons. And it's honestly time for us to get more active again. So hopefully you have on your exercise clothes and your comfy shoes so we can get our bodies moving with DIY exercise. Hi, good morning once again. I am Miss Karen and this is James. Say hi, James. Hi. <laughs> and we are here once again to guide you through easy exercises that you can do right at home, in your living room, in your bedroom, in the yard, in the kitchen, right? If a kitchen big enough. This um, session is called Tighten and Tone. We always tighten and tone, but it's a special tighten and tone because we're going to go on the floor a little bit later in the program. So let's warm up. You always need to warm up so you don't, you, you're, you don't get injured. Three, four, five. Let's go forward, James. Five, four, three, two, one. Shake it out. Three, two, one. Okay, arm swings. Let's take a little space. And remember, it's this. Ready? Let's go, guys. One, two, three, four. Make sure you get the waist. Six, bend the knees. Seven, eight, nine. I don't have to tell James. He knows. 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. 10 more. 9, 8, 7, 6. You feel it in your waist? 4, not true. 3, 2. James and know that easy. 1. Okay. So, and the next one coming up is we're doing snap kicks. You're a karate man, so you are no better than I will. So, 15 right leg, 15 left leg. Let's do the right first. Ready, guys? Go. One, two, three, four. Put up your block, right? Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Five more. Four more. Three, two, and one. Next leg. Ready? Go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Breathe. Eight. Tuck in. Nine. Ten. Five more. Four. Three. Two. And one. Yes. Upper cuts. Upper cuts. Ready? Set. Go. One, two, three, four, five, six. This one is fun. Seven, eight. I like this. Nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. Ten more. Nine, eight. Seven, I almost hit myself. Five, four, three, let's go guys. Two, 
And one, shake it out, dance, yeah. So jump out that I don't like, but I know you like. 30 seconds, go. One, two, three, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. 10 more, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Yes. Well done, James. Mothers, I thought you would have spring to the ceiling. Ready? So we'll take a little rest. Okay. Let's roll our boat. Let's go up the Belize River. Right? So we have 30 seconds to row away. Ready? Paddle. One, two, three, four, five. Bend your knees, kids. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, row, 22, 3, 24, 25, 5 more, 4, 3, 2, last one, yay, all right. The next one up is called knee lift with a twist. So remember this? Right. Ready, guys? Ready, James? Yes. 15, go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, five more, four, three, two, and one. Next side. Guys, just it's switching from right to left, right? Go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. And 15. Jabs. Again, first we did uppercuts, so now we're just jabsing, right? Ready? Go. One, two, three, four, five, six, <laughs> seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. You are out. Box me. 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 10, 9, Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one. Yay! No, jump rope. 30 seconds. Not my favorite, your favorite. Ready? Set. Grab your imaginary rope, kids, and go. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 10 more, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Yes. Woo. Let's rest a little bit. Woo. Are you sweating yet, kids? Mom is? <laughs> Mom. <laughs> Your mom is sweat? <laughs> 3, 2. So now we are going to go to the floor. What we'll be doing is doing some toning, some bicycles, crunches, then leg lifts, and then bicycles and crunches again. So let's do that. Ready? So we have to get on the floor. Remember, we position up, set, and go. Yes. So position your hand and lift and go. One, two, Three, four, tuck the tummy in. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, five more. Four, look straight up. Three, two, and one. All right, crunches, any style, but this is the easiest. Go. One, two, three, four, five, 
six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Five more, James. Four, three, folks. Two and one. Let's take a little rest. Five, four, three, two, and one. So it's simple toe touches. Just touch, right? We'll do 10 and 10. Ready? Lie flat. Go. One, two, three. You don't have to let your foot touch. Four, because you're strong. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Get ready and hold it up, James. Five, four, three, two, one. Next side. Left hand, left, touching left foot. Go. One, two, you feel the hamstrings? Three, <laughs> four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Get ready and hold. Five, four, three, two, and one. Ready? Let's go. We have 15 more bicycles and 15 crunches. Ready, James? Set, go. One, two, three, four. Look straight up, five. Best position, six, seven. Don't pull the neck, eight, nine, ten, five, four, three, two, and one. Okay, easy crunches. Cross the ankles, round the shoulder, and ready. Go. One, two, three, four, five. Round the shoulder, six. You'll get there, seven, eight, nine, ten, five. Breathe, four, three, two, and one. Really good. Okay. So let's get into our bird dog position. This is a, this is a, so we, we extend the right hand and left leg. 10 seconds, nine, you notice it's like a plank. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one. Next side, go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, squeeze, eight, squeeze and tuck, nine, and 10. Okay, James, now we do the cut stretch or cut pose. Ready? Arch the back and drop the head. 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one. Lift the core pose, lift the head, stick the butt out, swag the back. 10 seconds, nine, tuck in guys, eight, seven, how are you feeling James? Six, five, James is always good. Four, three, two, and one. Let's come up and, ah, oh, how was that? Good. good. <laughs> Let's go, stretch it, stretch guys. Stand on the toes, get up on the toes and hold. Five, breathe, four, three, two, and one. Let's do some plays and some stretches. These, so we just go, ready, go. Bend, one, remember to breathe. Two, and the last one, three. Thank you guys, thank you very much. Uh, uh, James and I love having you um, doing to do this with us. We're um, 
happy that you're following and you'll see us next time for another challenging session. Pow! <laughs> Thank you. Well, we just had to quickly freshen up because Miss Karen helped us to bust a sweat just now. Being physically healthy is important for us, especially when we're inside for almost the entire day. Hopefully, you enjoyed that mini session. The sweat is worth it. You're probably out of breath right now, so we will take a little commercial break so we can wind down a little. Enjoy some water and maybe take a quick stretch before we move into the next segment for today. Please stay tuned so we can end off how we started. In it together. Be right back. Hello everyone. Do you think that being sad, angry or worried really affects the mind? I think so. Quarrels and fights and bad news really bother me. So I believe it's important for us to address those things that bother us. Our God will now help us to do so in this fun segment that we call Peace Out. Check it out. <laughs> Hello boys and girls, my name is Miss Young and I'm happy to be back here with you for another session of Peace Out. Do you know what stress is? That's okay if you don't know. I am here to tell you. Stress is when something happened and you didn't like it and your body got mad. Maybe your face got hot, tummy started to hurt, or your eyes filled up with water. Stress is not good, but it is normal. Lucky for you, you can make it go away because you are the boss of your body. When you feel stressed or mad, sometimes you make bad choices and get into trouble. It's not good when this happens, so I will teach you how to do the stress press to make you feel better when you are mad. I want you to hold out your hands and show me your palms like this. And just like your feet, your palms have heels. You can find the heels of your palms right here. They are the bottom part of your hand just above your wrist. I want you to touch your palm heels and make a circle like what I'm doing. Good. Now make your hand straight and tight like a knife, like what I'm doing. Then I want you to put both your hands together and press your palm heels together. While you're doing this, make sure your elbows are out. Make sure your hands don't touch your chest. Press your palm heels together as hard as you can. If you press it long enough, your arm should feel a little bit shaky. Awesome, you're doing the stress press. You need to keep in this position for at least one minute or we can count to 10 together. Let's try that. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Wonderful! This helps you calm down when you're mad. It might not fix the problem that made you mad, but it helps you feel better and make better choices about the problem. The last thing to know is you have to practice it or it won't work. Just like you practice your numbers, alphabets, and even running, you have to practice the stress press to get good at it. So the next time something happens that you don't like and you get mad, you can do the stress press to make you feel better. Thanks for watching today, and I hope you enjoy the rest of your day. Until next time, peace out. After that session, I think it's clear that talking about what we are feeling is very important in making sure we remain happy and able to focus on learning, growing, and having fun. It even allows us to know what our parents are feeling so we don't feel too sad when they seem worried or annoyed. I wish I could be around a little longer, but this segment ends now, guys. So I have to say, peace out. So, 
So, that wraps up In It Together for today. Remember, this is a special show dedicated to us. Schools are closed, but we can still learn together, play together, dance together, draw together, and have endless fun together. With our TVs or tablets or phones, we can link up in a productive way. And it's also a big change from just being at home, idling for most of the day, which has gotten really boring. Remember, this show, Just For Us, will air every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday from 11 in the morning until midday. We air on Channel 7 all over the country and on Facebook at In It Together Belize. Please tell your friends and family members to join in on the fun. We are going through some pretty weird times, but don't worry, we'll get through this because we're in it together. Thanks for tuning in today. was brought to you by the Ministry of Education and UNICEF.